Hello, everybody. Good evening. Uh, we were having some technical difficulties. I think we got through that now. Uh, let's see. Suppose uh, here's some more I need to let in. Good evening, Dr. Howard. Hey, Ms. Lane, how are you tonight? <laughs> All right, and you? Doing well. Good. I'm doing well. Good, Good afternoon. Ms. McCallum, how are you tonight? Having a wonderful day, thank you. All <laughs> right. I like the sound of that. <laughs> hey, Ms. Griffiths. Good afternoon, Good evening. how are you? All right. Good. I see Reverend Pale on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Pastor. We're, uh, we're here Sister tonight. Hyman. Hello, Sister Hyman. Hello, Who everybody. Good evening. Sister Hyman. Oh, hey. All the way from Europe. <laughs> yes. Oh. Uh, in the midnight hour. <laughs> hey, Ms. Radley. I woke up. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, Lord. <clears throat> Ms. Radley, when you called back, I was on the phone with Reverend Ingram. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I had already silenced my phone. <laughs> That's all right. call. <laughs> and we were having some, I was having some technical difficulties. So he, he got me on all right. How can I get my picture again? Uh, do you <laughs> see uh, where it says video or stop video? Stop video. Click on that. Just my name from up there. Click it again and see what happens. That went off. That mm -hmm. should turn your camera on. Got what? Oh, let me see. <laughs> See what happens. Oh. There the you go. The camera wasn't on. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> I got it. Good, good. How's everybody? Oh, good, and you? Good, good, good. Fine. Good. I, I am packing to come to America. <laughs> all, all right, right. <laughs> yeah. all right <laughs> sounds familiar all right, all right. You, sound, you sound as though you're ready yes <laughs> all right i'm ready okay well i have 6 35 so, uh, let me open with a word of prayer and then i'll turn it over to reverend paler Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day and all of the blessings that you've given. Uh, we are certainly grateful for this opportunity to study your word. For these who are here, for those who will watch and listen later, we give you praise. We're grateful as we have gathered from near and far, even across the ocean to Europe. And uh, we praise you for our sister in Italy, and we ask that you would Bless each and every one of us as we listen tonight. Strengthen us spiritually and in every way. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hello, everyone. Good to see you tonight. I, too, ran into a little difficulty right when the screen opened up. It said that I had to, um, uh, it told me that I had to update. Said, you have to update your Zoom. <laughs> and I, I mean, I had the picture and it just said, you you have to update your Zoom. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it went to another screen and I started clicking and then it gave me a bar. I had to watch the bar go all the way to the right before 
I said, why? Why on Wednesday night? But it, yeah, but we know why. Good to we see you. Why. Yeah, we know why. Praise good to Lord. see you, everyone. <laughs> I trust and pray it's been a good week for you. Oh, yes. Welcome to Zoom. To anyone who may be listening by cell phone, God bless you. Glad to have your listening ear tonight. Sister Hyman, we're 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 hoping whoever closes us out tonight with prayer will also include in the prayer your trip to come across the water to come back home that you'll have a safe trip coming across the ocean. Amen. We Praise certainly hope Lord. that will happen. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Thank you for being on board tonight. Tonight we have um we have a short lesson tonight. Um we're doing a one uh, one lesson tonight on tongues. Uh, we wrapped up talking about angels, and uh, tonight we want to take a brief look at tongues. I'm going to ask, um, and I hope you have your Bibles tonight, because we'll do a little flipping, not much, but we're going to do a little flipping in the Word of God tonight. We're going to ask our chairman, if he doesn't mind, to, uh, to read verses. Tonight, Reverend. Well, okay, we, we're going to ask our pastor tonight. <laughs> our beloved pastor tonight to um, share with us verses two through four in Acts two. Acts two, verses two through four. All right. Acts two, mm -hmm. verses two through four. Yes, sir. And yes. suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Thank you, Pastor. That's all. That's our foundational piece tonight. We're going to be moving through some other um, verses in just a little bit, but that's that's where we're that's where we're going to launch off from that uh, Pentecost experience. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Those of you, I, I know you're very familiar with that that particular story, whereas it says there were at least 120 that had gathered together. So before we before we get into that story. I want to share some myths with you. You, you. you may not need to write these myths down. There, there'll be some things you may want to take notes on in a little bit, but you may not want to write these myths down, but I do want to share them with you. Myths about tongues. Myths about tongues. Number one, speaking in tongues is for charismatic Christians. Speaking in tongues in tongues is for charismatic Christians. And you know, that's a myth. That's uh that's not neither here nor there. We 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 can dismiss that. Myth number two: Pentecostal or Pentecostal holiness congregations only have this gift. What? Pentecostal or Pentecostal holiness congregations only have this gift. And you may have heard that. I, I don't know, but it's a myth. If you've heard, it's just a myth. Myth number three. You aren't saved if you don't speak in tongues. You may have heard that somewhere. Uh, it's just a myth. And uh, if you've heard it, I'm glad that you dismissed it or rebuked it or whatever, because it's not true. Um, and, and, and sometimes that particular myth and I know I shouldn't say it but sometimes that particular myth it comes from the pulpit sometimes um in in certain denominations but again that's just a myth myth number four tongues is one of the greatest gifts given to the church tongues is one of the greatest gifts given to the church that's a myth because all the spiritual gifts given to the church and given to individual Christians are great. All of them are great. So that's a myth right there. All of them are great. Um, 
God the Spirit, when he dis dispensed those gifts, all of them are great. Okay. Our pastor ran off, ran, read the launching verses for us in the book of Acts, a very familiar story. Um, it, it goes on to say that um, there were 120 present. But as we dig deeper into the story, there were 120 present on one accord in one place, but there were others on the outer perimeters that also witnessed what happened here. Now, Luke uh, is the writer uh, of, of those, uh, those verses, and um, Luke is very careful when he's being the author or writer to distance himself. Uh, but if Luke was there, it happened to him as well. Now, those on the perimeter, they heard the wind as well. Now, there's a verse that said, all of a sudden, a gushing strong wind. Those that were on the perimeter heard the wind as well. Those that were on the perimeter heard the miracle as well. Now, Before we dive into this particular miracle, let me share with you that verses two, three, and four are a, if you want it to be, a foreshadow or prelude to the way it's going to be in heaven, to the way it's going to be in heaven. In this little story, the small group was very diverse. Tongues, nations, cultures, all coming together. When you get in glory, there will be nations, tribes, cultures, all will have come together. Wait a minute, preacher. It, yeah, heaven is diverse. They're going to be there. Just like we're seeing in this verse, in glory, heaven will be diverse. And if that's true, they're all going to be there. Then God is going to be the one to fix it so that everyone can speak to each other and everyone is known. Just like the scripture says, known and, and to know. So this is a like a little foretelling of the way it's going to be in glory. There will be no strangers. You might come up to a person uh, in glory who here on earth was a Russian. No problem. You're going to be able to speak Russian. God's going to fix that. <laughs> and when you, and when he speaks to you, you're going to understand what he says. Now, praise the Lord. One of the things that we should get before we get into this verse is to understand that God is not the author of confusion. I wish I had a witness tonight. Amen. We, we know there are 120 persons here, and I'm going to mention some of their, some of these nationalities in a minute, 120. But when you go through those verses, there was absolutely no confusion, no drama. No misunderstanding. And you may say, how can that be? They didn't even really know each other. When you get in glory, you may say, oh, one night in Bible story, in Bible study, I was told that it was going to be a similar kind of thing. But we're going to be able to, without any problems, fellowship and praise God together with our different languages. So this is a prelude or foretelling of what, what's going to be in glory. Now let's get into this lesson. <clears throat> this lesson reflects the first definition of tongues. There are two definitions. This story reflects the first definition of tongues. And both definitions are, are sort of simple. The first definition of tongues is a foreign language. 
a foreign language. And under that foreign language is the title, The Gifts of Tongues. Under that title, a foreign language, you can put it in parentheses if you want to, the gifts of tongues, because we're, we're gonna we're gonna look at that first. Now, in the gifts of tongues, and we know the first part of that says a foreign language, we see that on display right here in these first few verses of the book of Acts. Foreign language, yes. Also here, when, whenever the gift of tongues is being, in, being used or in operation, it is usually a public address or situation open to the public. That is why I was able to say, class, there were those who were not part of the 120 that heard it. Whenever the gifts of tongues are used, it's usually done in an open area so others can hear. Now, the strange thing about this, this gifts of tongues, yes, other people heard, but no matter who you turn to or who you were looking at, you could speak their language. For instance, <clears throat> An Asian person was able to turn to a Jew and speak Hebrew, and the he and the Jew knew everything the he, the, the um, Asian person was saying. And for the most part, what they were saying was they were speaking a language of praise. It could have been how great our Father God is, or we thank God for what Jesus is supply. It's 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 supplying us with but all of it was a language of praise and no matter which way they want to turn or flip that praise to god that person understood what they were saying now just think for a minute if if that was contemporary and bella De, well i'll come back to him in just a minute if that was contemporary and Putin got off the plane here in Raleigh and you went up to greet him, you would be able to talk to Putin in his own language and tell him how you felt and how you saw his policies. He would understand everything you were saying. Now, someone may say, how could that be? Well, in those few verses, it tells us how it happened. We'll, and we'll, we'll get to that in just a minute. An African person who normally speaks Swahili is able to look at a Roman and speak to that Roman person in Latin. Not miss a beat, not miss a syllable, not miss a verb tense. Wow, how could that be? We serve an awesome God. Now, I said um, just a minute or so ago, we would look at how that was able to happen. In those verses, we're given a clue. It said that the Holy Spirit fell upon them um, as cloven tongues. Oh, cloven tongues. That's how it happened. All of them had cloven tongues, simply meaning that their tongues were inspired, their tongues were burning, their tongues were as a blaze. You may want to go back and look in the Old Testament in the sense that Moses spoke to a bush that was burning, but the bush was never consumed. I wish I had a witness tonight, but he's good. He's good anyway. He's, he's good all the time. So when, when, when Luke says cloven tongues, it was as if there was a blaze right there at their mouth. And no matter what they said, it was going to be the right thing. It was going to always be correct. Mm -hmm. Which tells us 
that God the Spirit was directing the whole event and God the Spirit had taken charge of their vocal cords, had taken charge of their speech pattern. And you may say, preacher, is there another example of this happening in the word of God? Yes, some of you remember the story about Balaam and how, who would have thought the donkey just turned around, started talking. And, 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 and the donkey wasn't going hee-haw. God is awesome. I'm here to tell you tonight, God is awesome. So everyone who heard, heard it in their native tongue. Mm. So if there were 35 different languages present, the Holy Spirit set it up so that their language of praise would go out 35 times, but different for each person. Now, those that were on the outside of this were amazed too, because they witnessed that. Um, Galileans, for instance, they're mentioned. In that day, the Galileans were some what considered to be the hillbillies uh, or, or, or not the laughing stock, but the hillbillies. And they were considered to be poor um, and uneducated. And some even said that the Galileans could not even get their own language correct when they were talking. But they saw the Galileans speaking to others perfectly in that other, other person's language. Oh, my God. Now, as we move away from this, think about that tower that was built, the Tower of, of Babel. And at that time in the Old Testament, our Father God decided to, to change up the languages. And he, he instituted, he brought in foreign languages. So the person who brought in foreign languages knows exactly what to do with them when that time comes. God is never caught off guard. And, and he's always worthy of the praise. So the Holy Spirit worked that situation so that everything that was said pointed back to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Remember, part of the work and the job of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus. The Holy Spirit is to make Jesus real to us. Wish you had a witness. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He's to make Jesus real to us and not speak of himself. That's what the scripture says. The Holy Spirit does not come to speak of itself, but to make the Lord Jesus real to us. So in that, at that moment of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was making Jesus real and doing it in a way where he was getting the praise. Now, if we get ready to pull away from that, please keep in mind that that's the first definition of tongues. The first definition of tongues. Now, <clears throat> let's get ready to look at the second definition of tongues. The second definition of tongues says that tongues is a heavenly language or a prayer language or a coded language. Wait a minute, preacher, a coded language. Okay, the second definition of tongues is a prayer language or a heavenly language or a coded language. So you may say, how do you distinguish the two? That's a very good question because it looks like it can be confusing. Tongues as, <clears throat> as it's being told to you right now, <clears throat> it's often referred to as the tongues of grace, the tongues of grace. When this type of tongue is at play, it's usually in a private setting. 
that's why it's sometimes called a prayer language because it's usually in a private setting. Most of the time it's referred to as the tongue of grace. In a private setting, a person is speaking to God and God who can interpret all things has no problem with that person speaking in tongues in their prayer and he is there to interpret. Now, before we go a little bit further into, into this, the tongues of grace, let's, let's stop for a minute and go back to that first tongue, that first tongue, a foreign language or any foreign language. And it's known as the gifts of tongues. It's used in the public. It's often used to address large crowds. When this happens for the most part, there is teaching or preaching or prophesizing going on, and there must be an interpreter. If there's not an interpreter, then this type of tongues should not be used. And Paul talks about that. We'll look at that in a minute. This type of tongues should not be used if there's not an interpreter. Now, let's go back to tongues of grace. There is nothing sweeter than the communion you can have with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have that. And we know as Christians, sometimes through the Holy Spirit, the Lord wants to give us more. But that choice is up to us. It's always up to us. And you may say, well, preacher, I don't, I don't, I don't speak in tongues. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. And then you may say, preacher, what if I choose to one day speak in tongues? We have not because we, somebody finished that. Ask not. ask not. We ask not. We have not because we ask not. I've never known my father to be selfish. Never. Some people speaking in, in tongues is something that they are not ready for. That, that's okay. Uh, yeah, that's okay. That's no problem. Um, when we pray earnestly, our Father hears our prayer. And sometimes when we pray, we, um, we pray in Jesus' name. That prayer is heard and God responds to that prayer. What Paul is getting at is that with some of the gifts, the Holy Spirit is willing to take you deeper into that gift. With the gift of, of grace tongues, the Holy Spirit when we decide that we want to not just pray class, but we want to pray in the spirit. We want to pray in the spirit. One of the things about praying in the spirit is that after you do that for a while and you say, when you're praying in the spirit, Lord, I want to be able to talk to you in tongues. One of the first things that always happens in that situation, it appears as if God did not answer. That's, that's almost a given. That's the way it appears. Notice I said, that's how it appears. I didn't say that's the way it really was, but that's how it appears. And this may sound familiar. When Jesus told them that they were to tarry and wait, he told them to tarry and wait, and not many days thereafter. When a person desires to speak in tongues, they make that request known. 
they make that request known to God. I des desire to speak in tongues. And I understand if I am to speak in tongues, then I must pray in the spirit. If I pray in the spirit, I also understand I must tarry. Mm, that sounds familiar. That sounds like something Jesus told them that they had to wait. You got to tear. You got to wait on that. If you wait on it, it may not come tomorrow, but it'll come. Now, one of the one of the, the gifts of that speaking in, in, in tongues, and we're talking about grace tongues right now. One of the things there um, is that there is a closer communion with you and the Holy Spirit. There's a closer communion when you fall into speaking with tongues. Sometimes in praying, there are so many things we want to express that we just aren't sure how to do. It. We even wonder sometimes if God is hearing it all. And if we find ourselves in an emotional situation and we are heavily burdened, sometimes we'll start praying. And you know, we're so overcome with whatever that's going on we're unable to finish the prayer. God, the spirit finishes that prayer. And he sends it on up. He sends a petition on up to the throne. Now, in those instances, if God, the spirit finished your prayer, that should be an indication to you that when you're praying in the spirit, at some point, it becomes sort of like this. <clears throat> you're thinking about it. It's on your mind. It's on your heart. But as you began to utter, as you began to speak about that thing that's on your mind, that's on your heart, what you say expresses what you feel, but the interpretation and the verbal dialogue is not what it has been. What you're saying can only be understood by God. You go into a language, you go into a spiritual language, and when you go into that spiritual language, that spiritual language, you're already in the spirit realm. That spiritual language goes to God. He interprets. Sometimes the only thing you, you can remember out of that situation is that you are talking to God. You can't even remember all the things that you told him, but you know you talked to him and you know he heard you. Now, let, let me share a few other things, give you a, a feel for that. Sometimes during a morning worship service or during a revival, you watch this. A preacher may be delivering a sermon. You watch it. As they preach, Something leads them away from the podium, but they continue to preach. They're not behind the podium, which is usually considered secure ground. They've moved away from the podium. What moved them away from the podium? I'm not going to answer that. I'll let you answer that. But as they moved away from the podium and they're still preaching, and they just keep on preaching as if they've forgotten where the podium is, then all of a sudden it's cut off. What cut it off? What cut it off? It moved them from the podium. 
took them out into, let's say it took them out into deep waters. They had no idea they were going to walk that far away from the podium and still be preaching. And the, and, and, the, and the bits and pieces that they're preaching at that time, it's not on the paper they have on the podium. But they're preaching their heart out. Mm -hmm. Just preaching. And it wasn't on the paper. And a few minutes later, it cuts them off. And you can tell when it cuts them off because they just stop abruptly. It was never part of the way they had planned to go with that message or in that service. When you pray in tongues at a certain point, the Holy Spirit cuts it off. Yes. Have you ever seen a choir singing a song and, oh, the spirit was high in the house. I'm telling you, they were just singing. So they finished the second stanza or the second verse, and the person does what some call a run. In other words, they take the song a little further. And as they're taking the song a little further, the Holy Spirit takes them a little further. And before you know it, they have stepped out there. And then all of a sudden, the spirit cuts it off. Amen. And amen. Amen. <clears throat> let's, amen. Let's continue. We're talking about um, speaking in tongues. <clears throat> speaking in tongues happens to those Christians who step out on faith. And remember, the scripture says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. It's not, will the Holy Spirit respond? Mm -mm. The Holy Spirit is always ready. But are you? Are you? And when we close tonight, I'm going to sh share something else. That may be you, but I hope it's not when I share that in lesson. You step out on faith. Lord, I want to start at night. I want to start praying in the spirit. Teach me how to do it. Did, did you hear how I told you to bring that about? Teach me how to do it. You don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. We have to be taught. Woo! Leave that alone. Oh, oh. You got to be taught. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. It'll go, it'll go to voicemail. Um, hold on just a minute. <clears throat> The Holy Spirit is going to evaluate you to see if you're sincere. It's going to see if you're sincere. One way it'll know that you're sincere about this is that you're willing to wait. You're willing to tarry. You're going to keep praying at night. You're not going to give up praying. You're going to stick with it. And eventually... <laughs> In those long prayers, your language is going to slip. You're going to be talking. And, 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 and the words are just going to flow. What you're thinking and what you're feeling is just going to flow. God's going to hear it all and receive it all. And the person who's directing it will be the Holy Spirit. It starts with faith. The grain of a mustard seed. Some of us have faith, but we don't have the same amount of faith in every situation. I listened to my beloved pastor Sunday talk about the man pushing the wheelbarrow. 
A lot of people had faith in the crowd. But when he asked, would someone get in the wheelbarrow? You saw what the real faith was. God, the spirit. He's looking for real, genuine faith. Now. <clears throat> When you exercise, <clears throat> excuse me, speaking in tongues, Paul is saying, let it be done privately. <clears throat> he warns against those who speak in tongues openly, which is considered um, to be a situation where you have an interpreter, but if you not don't have an interpreter, then you, you fall back into the prayer language. You do it privately in your home, in your prayer closet, wherever you find time to meditate with the Lord, you do it there. And I'm gonna share this with you. If you've been praying for a long time, when the Holy Spirit nudges you and say, Come on, let's, let's go to prayer. You'll be ready. You'll be looking forward to that. That will be a part of your routine that you don't want to miss. Now, Paul says that when we use the other form of speaking in tongues, we need to make sure that we understand the rules for that. Because if we don't, then we're only edifying ourselves. And if we're ed edifying ourselves, then we're being selfish because nobody's benefiting from that. It becomes a show. And mm -hmm. in, in the Corinthian church, Paul had come in and set some things in order. Some people didn't know how to handle their gifts. And I want to mention this right now because it, it's going to come up in the end of the lesson. The Holy Spirit, God the Spirit, is a he. He's a person. And he's grieved. He's grieved when we misuse the spiritual gifts. It not only has uh, to be speaking in tongues, but any of the spiritual gifts that we misuse, God, the spirit is grieved. Who wants to grieve the spirit? And that's some of what was going on um, at the church in Corinth. Yeah, that, that kind of thing uh, is going on. I want to share this quickly with you. <laughs> the story is told of a family that was seated at the, at the table for supper. It had been a long day, and when the wife came home, she fried some chicken. Her youngest child was sitting in the high chair and had just recently started eating some solid food, but not much. She had mashed the potatoes up and had put a dab or two of sweet corn on the plate. Everyone sat down to eat. The oldest child, Brenda, while eating, kept her eyes on little baby Bobby. A few minutes into the meal, <clears throat> just a few minutes into the meal, little baby Bobby says, ba, B-A, ga, G-A, ba, B-A, and ba again. No one paid any attention to the little child. None. He says it again, this time much louder. Ba, go, ba, ba. At that time, his sister turns around and she puts more corn on his plate. 
he stops. The father says in amazement, how did you know what he was saying? How did you know what he was saying? So that lets you know that when you're speaking in tongues, God knows what you're saying. Now, as we move on, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn, oh boy, uh, I want you to turn to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians quickly, the 14th chapter um, in 1 Corinthians. And we're going to look at verses 17 through 19. 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, verses 17 through 19. Okay. If, if you have it, amen. Okay. For thou verily givest thanks well, but the others not edified. I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than ye all. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Wow. Wow. That Paul, Paul, Paul is, is saying a lot there. That's, uh, that's him um, responding to um, some of the Corinthians who, um, who, who felt they were doing the right thing just by putting um, some of their spiritual gifts on display. And that's not, that's not the way um, it should be. Every gift that we have should glorify God and not, and not ourselves. <clears throat> now, with tongues, there, there come some questions um, with tongues. Should one be concerned that they don't speak in tongues? No. No, you shouldn't be. Nothing wrong with you if you don't. But it's there for you if you want to. Paul says that he spoke in tongues more than them all. He probably did. Paul was a, was a warrior, a prayer warrior, and he probably did. But nowhere in the scriptures does it say that when Paul was praying and, um, and using the prayer language, that Paul used that prayer language publicly. He did not do it. He did not do it. He used it, but he didn't use it publicly. Now, there are some people that are fearful of tongues. Um, I, I don't know why, but they are. Um, one pastor said on one occasion that one member told him, well, pastor, if I start speaking in tongues, uh, how do I know that I won't be in the grocery store line checking out groceries and I'm just overwhelmed? That was a real concern that a member had. But at the same time, it was sort of ridiculous. Jesus reminds us to do all things decent and in order. Order. Amen. Right, right, right. The Holy Spirit is not just going to overwhelm you in the grocery store line. No, no. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a fear that shouldn't even exist. But some people have some fears like that. Some people even fear that if they started speaking in tongues, that some of the Christian friends that they have 
would stray away from them. That's a real concern that some people have. Oh my goodness. Now, there are some churches where, uh, let me give you a couple of examples. Um, a bishop may stand up toward the end of service and lo and behold, the bishop just, wow, he just started, started speaking in tongues. I mean, he just goes for it in tongues without hesitation. He just, whatever, in tongues. But as soon as he sits down, the pastor stands up and interprets or gives the interpretation to the congregation. God usually, when that kind of thing is going to happen, that uh, a prophecy of something's going to be given like that, God has a person in place that's able to explain it to the congregation so that it can be beneficial to them. That bishop would not have done that if he or she were not aware that there was an interpreter there on the podium. So if you ever go to a service and you see that going on and there's an interpreter, then you know they followed scripture. If there is no mm -hmm. interpreter, then no, you don't speak in tongues. You, you, you don't do that. Now, let's get ready to... Uh, Let's get ready to try to close this close this lesson tonight. What one of the things I hope you will always do is to choose the best gifts. All of the gifts are great, but choose the best gifts and cling to them. For example, one of the best gifts would be charity. Charity. Paul even stresses how how um, how charity. It's better than all the other gifts, and those gifts are good. Cling to the gifts in your life for your personality that you can handle, that best benefits you, but also be aware and be willing to accept those other believers who choose to use some of the other gifts. Are you with me tonight? Yes. Amen. Okay. Here's some questions for you as we wrap up this lesson. First four questions, true or false? Operating in any of the spiritual gifts is a choice you make, true or false? True. True, okay. True. Yes, it's true, choice you make. All great ministers speak in tongues. True or false? False. False, yes. False. Of all the spiritual gifts, charity is the greatest. True. True, true, true. true. Number four. Many denominations don't talk about tongues. True. true or false? True. 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 That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Why is God the Spirit grieved when spiritual gifts are misused? When used inappropriately. Okay. Okay. All right, okay, when they're used uh, inappropriately, Ab absolutely. Next question, how do you feel about tongues? So you may want to unmute to respond to that. <laughs> how do you feel about <laughs> tongues? Praise the Lord. Well, um, there's so many, so much here that I, I didn't know about tongues yeah uh, but um i'm happy that you said that um 
it's okay where is that that um we sh don't need to fear about speaking in tongues something like that yes. you said yes yes okay. yes um yes so i don't know i i don't know i have to i have to listen to you more on that <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a it's an open question. Let me repeat that one more time because um, as we get ready to wrap up, we have two more questions. But let me repeat that one one more time. How do you feel about tongues? How, how, how do you feel about tongues? Well, I thought it was interesting that you differentiated between yeah. the different types. I don't don't think I really understood that before, and really. Uh, saying that the the one type that is spoken in public should have a have an interpreter, and then the other is to, is privately with God speaking in tongues. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. In, anyone else on that? In, anyone else? Okay. All right. Here we're, we're about to wrap it up. Tonight in, in the lesson, we came to understand that there are two definitions for tongues. One being the gifts of tongues, the other being grace tongues. Who can give a description of both? Okay, grace tongues is done in prayer. And uh, the gift of tongues is in an open forum. Right, absolutely. The grace tongues is, um, right, it's a prayer language, yes, and done in private. The um, gifts tongues is done openly, o openly, okay. ab 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 absolutely. Um, what, what, one of the things I learned from this lesson tonight, that there is nothing too hard for God. Dr. Howard, we turn it back over to you, sir. Thank you, Reverend Paler. Uh, this was certainly an interesting lesson tonight and uh, <clears throat> probably especially for all of us in that tongues is not a popular subject in the Baptist church, uh, as Reverend Paler alluded to earlier, it, conversation about tongues is pretty much denominational, depending upon which denomination you are a part of. <clears throat> so the more understanding we get about that, the, the better equipped we are and prepared we, we are. I know uh, more than once, Reverend Pay, I've heard someone speak in tongues, but I've never heard anyone interpret tongues. Yeah. Uh, and I have uh, been questioned, you know, been asked by, by people about uh, the lack of interpretation and because the scripture does say, as you mentioned, that there should be an interpreter in a public setting. Yes, uh, Reverend Paler has uh, given us uh, enough information to whet our appetite and cause us to maybe do some studying on our own continuing if uh, you have the interest in learning more about tongues. Reverend Paler, I, I heard you say, yes, sir. Uh, Pastor, I, I would like to mention, I, I failed to at the start of the lesson, um, there's another good book I'd like to refer um, to the class. I, I read this book, oh, I guess about four or five months ago. Um, the title of this book, The God I Never Knew, The God I Never Knew, and it's by Robert Morris, The God I Never Knew, and and. and one of the main things class he brings out in this book is that the Holy Spirit knows us 
but do we know him? The God I never knew is God the Spirit. I thought I knew God the Spirit. I'm grateful he knows me, but uh, I found out there was a lot about God the Spirit I did not know. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, certainly. Thank you for sharing that with us. And hope uh, you can find, find that book. Uh, I'm sure it'll be interesting reading. Yes. Uh, Reverend Paler, did I hear you say that the study on the whole uh, on speaking in tongues is a one night? That tonight's our only night on this subject. Okay, all right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for being on with us, and we look forward uh, to coming together again on next Wednesday uh, for Wow. We appreciate you, and uh, we certainly are hoping that persons are viewing. Uh, the video of WOW, uh, who maybe could not be with us at the 6.30 hour tonight. Uh, Mr. Anderson, I saw you joined us sometimes back uh, after Reverend Paler got started. It's good to have you with us as always. Uh, would you, sir, lead us in closing prayer? Brother okay. Anderson. All right. Heavenly Father, eternal God, thank you for giving us the opportunity to meet again to study your word. We pray that you will have, we have gained strength for our spirit, our souls, and our bodies. We know that you are our strength and our rescuer, and everything we need is found in you. Thank you for giving our teacher the words and wisdom to open our ears, our hearts, so that we can become better Christians. And Father, we cannot thank you enough for the many blessings that you have given us. Please continue to bless us, Father. Bless our families and bless our church and the church family, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I meant to share with you all earlier, uh, Reverend Shirley Johnson is in the hospital. Uh, she had emergency surgery today. Please keep her in your prayers. Uh, I spoke with her husband, Deacon Lester Johnson, and at the time she was still in surgery, but he said uh, he was told that things were going well mm. at that time. So. Please check on them. Keep them in your prayers. Pastor, uh, if I may interject this, Sister Hyman is, is going to be leaving. We want to keep her in prayer too, coming back to the U.S. Uh, how long are you going to be in Italy? Do you know? I will be, leave, I will be leaving next week next week uh, to come to america uh however my fights get changed often so um i just have to check my emails and make sure the flight is um leaving the day it says it's already changed twice <laughs> so um hopefully it doesn't change again but i have um stayed the amount of time that italy requires me to stay right so um the embassy wants to know uh if i'm aware that these flights are changing and i am so believe me they do keep up with you <laughs> okay. so if you All if right. you if you're here over your time uh, someone will contact you and let you know okay. so uh, hopefully my flight goes out okay next week and i hope to be home uh, by Thanksgiving mm -hmm. or before. Mm -hmm. Very good. Hey, hey, hey. Pray that you have safe travels. Mm -hmm. thank, you thank you so much for, for joining us. Yeah. Well, uh, and thank you all. Okay. Hey, you're welcome. Remind us, everybody, that we have church conference on uh, Saturday uh, and also uh, Ms. Uh, Margaret Robinson's funeral service will be Friday at the church. 
uh, viewing will be at 1030 and uh, the service begins at 11 o'clock and the borough will be in Carolina. Um, there's a viewing tomorrow. I don't remember exactly what times, but you can go on the um, uh, Stephen Lyons website to get the details of that. And then, of course, we look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Uh, with that, we're going to sign off for the night. Okay. I'll see you later. Good night. <laughs> Good, night. Good, night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.